What's good, gang? Recently, I've been rereading Kaiju number eight, and there's two scenes that caught my eye that I want to bring to your attention. There's no way that Matsumoto made these scenes this similar without having some sort of correlation. And these scenes have me asking the question, what or who is Kaiju number eight slash Kafka? Let's get into it. Now I'm sure that you're already asking yourself, what are these two scenes that he's talking about? And we're not gonna waste any time. The first scene is from chapter number one, when Kafka lets out his final battle screech right before almost getting attacked by that yoju and then everything that ensues afterwards. And then the second scenario that is very similar to this first one is whenever Kaiju number 10 is just about to be defeated by Mina in chapter 30 and lets out its final battle screech right beforehand and then what ensues afterwards. Now, let's start with chapters 30 and 31. Chapter 30 was the end of the Kaiju number 10 Wyvern Raid. Hoshina held off 10 just long enough for Mina Ashiro to finally get back to the Tachikawa base. Once she arrived, she came in and blasted 10 away to virtually nothing but a damaged core. Now, right before 10 was blasted away, it did what we thought was one final battle cry into the sky. But in chapter 31, we learned that this was not a battle cry. It was actually number 10 communicating with the Wyvern Yoju Kaiju one last time. 10 told the Yoju to fuse together, form a super giant Yoju bomb, and land right where it was at. This bomb was big enough to take out Tachikawa base and everyone that was there with it. But of course, Kafka changed over to Kaiju number 8, punched the bomb away, and everyone was saved. Hip hip hooray. But what I really want you to pay attention to is the fact that Kaiju number 10 was able to communicate with the Yoju through that screech before it was defeated. Not only was it able to communicate through that screech, but we also saw way back in chapter 25 that Kaiju number 10 was able to communicate through some sort of wave frequency and told all the Yoju to go out and eliminate everybody at the base or destroy everything at the base. Switching gears and going back to chapter one, this was when Kafka just got done mentoring Reno through his first day on the Kaiju cleanup crew duties. They both had intestine duties and it was an awful day, but Reno was grateful for Kafka and at the end of the day, walked up to him and told him, hey, just so you know, the defense forces increasing, are increasing the maximum age of the recruits to 33 years old. So if you still want a chance at chasing your dreams, you can do it and not be a quitter. As this conversation is happening, a Yoju comes out and attacks both Reno and Kafka at the same time. Kafka hurries up and pushes Reno out of the way and tells him to alert and go get help. Whenever Reno does that, he alerts, gets help, comes back and returns the favor by saving Kafka. At this point, both of them were standing there defenseless against the attacking Yoju that was ready to take them out. Here, Kafka thought to himself that he's so powerless. He couldn't protect his video games. He couldn't protect Miko the cat and now he can't even protect Reno, the new rookie. As Kafka's bracing for death, he gives one final screech and yells, damn it. From here, Mina destroys the Yoju and saves Reno and Kafka. Both Kafka and Reno are sent out to the hospital with injuries, and at the hospital, Kaiju number eight appears to, in front of Kafka, says, I found you, flies in his mouth and fuses with him and becomes Kaiju number eight slash Kafka humanoid. Now, there are a few weird things with how similar these scenarios are. The first thing to point out is obviously that it seems weird that Kafka's final screech seems like it was almost communication to number eight to come and find him. The same way that Kaiju number 10's final screech was to tell the Yoju to become a bomb and land on it. The second weird thing is that in chapter one, when Kaiju number eight says, I found you, it has a circular communication wave coming out of it like it was communicating with Kafka in some other way. These circular waves look the exact same as the waves Kaiju number 10 used with the Wyvern to communicate in the raid against the Tachikawa base back in chapter 25. We see these same circular communication waves being used by Kaiju number 10. So is this some sort of communication frequency that's specifically used for Wyvern? Which brings me to my third point. It also notice that in chapter one, Kaiju number eight is, has the ability to fly, like a wyvern type kaiju. Now, obviously, number eight looks more like an insect than anything, 
But when you think of Wyvern, you think of anything or anybody that can fly. So is this high pitched noise or screech some sort of way to communicate with Kaiju? After drawing this connection between these two scenarios or scenes, I really just started asking myself the exact same thing that I'm asking in this video. What or who is Kafka slash Kaiju number eight? If this does hold any sort of validity to it, then really back in chapter number one, what made Kaiju number eight hear Kafka's final cries and think that I need to go help that human? Or how was Kafka able to communicate with Kaiju number eight without even knowing that it was communicating with Kaiju number eight. Is Kaiju number eight going and helping Kafka signs that number eight does want to help humans and that's why it said kill Kaiju way back whenever Kafka was versing Esau and eight was like going crazy and took over? Or am I just going wild, right? This, this can't be this similar though. Matsumoto would not draw two scenes this similarly, right? You have two scenarios where you have Kafka and you have number 10. They're both uh, possibly about to lose their lives. The last thing that they do right before they lose their lives is a final cry, a final screech. Kaiju number 10's final screech was actually communication to those Wyvern Yoju. They form the bomb, Mina takes it out, or I guess Mina takes out Kaiju number 10. Kafka, about to lose his life, right beforehand, yells one final, damn it, screech. Mina comes in and takes that Yoju out, but afterwards, Kaiju number eight comes to Kafka. Why are these Kaiju going to these things or people that are making this final battle cry? Was Kafka able to communicate with Kaiju without even knowing it? I don't know. Let me know what y'all think in the comments below. Like I said, it's just something that I noticed whenever I was rereading through the series. There was no way that I thought that these two things were this similar for no reason at all. So just kind of started doing my own headcanon. I'm not saying any of this is right. I just like to think whenever I'm reading, man, have some fun with it. So nah, we got another chapter coming up this week. Be on the lookout. You already know I'm gonna drop a chapter review for it. I appreciate y'all. And other than that, arigato mas for watching the video. And I'll catch y'all later. <clears throat> Peace. Come on now.